Everyone in a great service already. Let's open up to Romans chapter 1. I just wrapped up uh, taking a course on the Apostle Paul and the exam we had until midnight Friday to finish the exam. So Friday about 8 o'clock, I was pouring over my notes again and praying for recall and come on, God, please give me the answers on this test and just kind of going through it. And I'm finally stopped. I said, you know, this is ridiculous. I haven't been in school for a while, but come on, just take the thing already. So I put it on there and it went pretty good, but I'm glad it's behind me. Amen. Uh, I've learned many things from the Apostle Paul, studying him out. And one of the things that uh, has been very, very inspiring is just really taking a look at his prayer life. And that's what I want to talk about this morning. Uh, I've entitled the lesson, Pray Like Paul. Let's, let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you for the Apostle Paul, and thank you for his life, thank you for his ministry, but especially thank you for his prayer life. And God, as we look at your word on just some specific things, the way he prayed, I pray that we'll apply them in our lives. It's been so inspiring and convicting uh, just to look at his prayer life, and I do pray that I can convey uh, his words and his thoughts and his heart more than anything uh, to the church here, God. Please fill me with your spirit. Bless the lesson, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Uh, Romans chapter 1, let's go in verse 8. First, I thank my God through Jesus Christ for all of you, because your faith is being reported all over the world. God, whom I serve with my whole heart in preaching the gospel of his Son, is my witness how I constantly remember you in my prayers at all times. And I pray that now at last, by God's will, the way may be open for me to come to you. And the first thing as we look at Paul's prayer life is Paul prayed for others. He prayed for others. And here he talks about the church in Rome. And he was thankful for the Romans, he said, because of their faith. And it was reported all over the world. And it's interesting, in the order of his epistles, this is the first one in the New Testament, right? And we see this theme of being thankful or thanks throughout his epistles. He mentions it over 40 times in his prayer life throughout his epistles on being thankful or giving thanks. Now, that is not something to overlook. And honestly, it's something to really imitate. How thankful are you when you pray? How thankful were you this morning when you prayed? How thankful were you when you took the Lord's Supper? Does it just permeate your time with God? That it just overflows with thankfulness when you pray? You know, it tells a lot about where our hearts are at, by how much gratitude is in there when we pray. Are we thankful or do we just grumble and complain a lot about what we don't have from God. You know, there's a lot to be thankful for in our lives. Amen? There's a lot to be thankful for for God, that we can have a relationship with the Lord Almighty, with the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, the Bible says, that we can go to God directly now through Christ. We don't have to go and sacrifice an animal, a lamb, and go through all the process they did in the Old Testament. We can go right to God. Are you grateful that you can approach God's throne it says, with confidence because of Jesus Christ. We need to be thankful for our lives. You may or may not notice you're alive this morning. Amen? I'm alive. We're still here. And we're here to know Jesus and to be more like Jesus and to have an impact with our lives while we're still here. You know, it's important to be grateful where we live. And I hope that you feel great about where God has you. He has you where he wants us. And where we live, we live in a beautiful part of the world. Uh, this Friday and Saturday, the President of the United States and the President of China are coming here to meet in Rancho Mirage and have a big powwow uh, on a political realm. It's pretty cool that they're going to pick Rancho Mirage of all places to meet. We, get, we live in a great place. Perspective is everything in life. Is the glass half full or is it half empty in your lens? You know, I do thank God every day for the boundary lines falling in pleasant places here in the desert. Now, I admit it's easier to do that in the winter, isn't it? Than maybe in the summer. Oh, thank you, God. You know, it's 120. Maybe you're out there praying and you're just dying. 
That's a stretch. But in the winter, it's a lot easier. But you know what? We've got to be grateful for our summers and be grateful for the boundary lines falling in pleasant places. But really, on a serious note, I'm really settled that this is going to be my life's work in the ministry. I'm here to stay. Maybe the next 20 years or so, if God wants me somewhere else, he'll make that obvious. But I'm settled. I'm here. We're engaged. This is our home. Amen? Does your prayer life just ooze with gratitude? Paul's did. It really did come out of his pores, even in very tough situations. He prayed with others, but he prayed with gratitude. Mike Rock uh, is a great brother. He's over in the Middle East uh, right now, and we know and love Mike, those that are in the church, and he's actually my supervisor in the ministry. I got a call for him yesterday. They're doing well. They're just leaving Dubai and heading on to Amman, Jordan. It was four in the morning, their time when he called. I said, I saw it was Mike, and I did the math in my head there, and I said, wow, what are you doing up morning. He goes, well, we're about to get on the plane to go to Amman, Jordan, but uh, please be praying for him. It's going well so far, and I, I told him that I'm praying for boldness, courage, and a safe trip, that he will not back down preaching the word in a very dangerous part of the world right now. But he said something years ago that stuck with me. He said, if 95% of your prayer life is not filled with gratitude, you're going to fall away. I was like, wow, that's a big statement. But, you know, there's some truth to that. Philippians chapter 1, verses 4 through 6, Paul is thanking the church in Philippi and really thanking God for the church for, with great joy for the partnership that they have together. And it says that God will bring about a completion of a good work in them. And I feel that way about desert cities. I feel that way about all of you. I love our church. Our best days are ahead. And I've got a lot of vision and excitement for the future for our church. Very faithful that God's going to bless us with more staff. We're going to have an incredible number of people coming to the Lord, I think, in future years. I've got vision that we can have buildings down the road. I've got vision that we'll really saturate the entire Coachella Valley with Jesus Christ. I have vision we'll have multiple services one day. Amen? I hope you believe that and feel that way about our group. In Colossians chapter 1, verse 3, Paul says he always thanks God for the Colossians. In the church there in Colossae. And probably the most convicting part about that is the word always. He says always that he thanks God for them. And I do think, I thought about this for myself and for us, that we tend to pray more for ourselves, don't we, than other people. Paul didn't. He, he really prayed for others. Let's go to 2 Timothy chapter 1. Still with me? In verse 3, I thank God, whom I serve as my forefathers did with a clear conscience, as night and day I constantly remember you in my prayers. Timothy was perhaps Paul's most valued young leader and close friend. He was his son in the faith. His love for him is made very clear throughout his prayers, isn't it? And this is one example of it. And we've got some Timothys here that I am very, very grateful for in the church in Desert Cities. I did want to recognize Aaron Domingo this morning. Aaron's a great brother, and he has been a great Timothy and still is to me in the Lord. Uh, he was converted here, and he's done a fantastic job leading our campus ministry uh, for the last couple of years. And he's a great brother. He's done a great job when he's taught for the, the youth ministry, and I just appreciate his faith. He was here this morning. He was writing down some notes during the welcome. I said, are you writing out your sin list for communion? He was. He, he was writing out his sins from this week. He was asking God to forgive him. I'm just kidding. He wasn't. But uh, he's got a great heart. He's a great brother. And uh, as he transitions here, I want everyone to know how much I love Aaron, how much I respect him, and how much I have valued him leading our campus ministry. Can we give him a hand, please, and really welcome him and show him how much we appreciate him? He's an awesome young brother. Where's Carlos? Amen, bro. Carlos Mendoza. Carlos is a great brother. He serves as our singles leader in the singles ministry. 
and he's really growing. We've seen Carlos grow a lot, especially the last couple of years. I've really seen that with him. I've seen him grow in his faith. He does a great job in the worship. I've seen him grow in his speaking. And I super appreciate you, Carlos, just your, your ability and your sacrifice to really serve the singles ministry. And we really appreciate that. Now, one of the great things about our singles ministries here is that it's one of the few places that we have more men in the ministry than women. That's a good thing. Amen? Most places, because women are more naturally emotional, they can connect with God easier. Usually there's more women in the church than men, but our singles, there's actually twice as many men. That's really great, and I think it's a testimony to all the single brothers, but especially Carlos. And lastly, I really appreciate Rick Ortiz. He's going to be our new campus leader. He's in Kingdom Kids today. He's got a serving heart. Uh, I've seen him grow a lot, and I know his best days are ahead. He's an RN. He's diligent. Uh, in his studies. He's become a nurse. He works at Eisenhower. He's bright, but he loves God. And he's going to be preaching for us on June 23rd, uh, just really about his conviction. We'll be looking forward to that. So we've got some young people that I really feel as Paul did for Timothy in exactly the same way. You know, the book of Philemon is all about relationships. And again, he expresses thanks for Philemon in there and his faith. And in verse 6, in that epistle, Paul talks about Philemon and how he prays for Philemon to be active in sharing his faith. Now, the context probably is sharing his faith with the others in the church. It's probably with other Christians. But it also works with those outside of Christ, doesn't it? And it says, be active in sharing your faith, Philemon, so you are a full understanding of every good thing we have in Christ Jesus. You know, simply reaching out to others outside of Christ, it helps us to be grateful for what we have as disciples, doesn't it? It just shows us what the world has out there is, is not a lot to offer us. And there's a saying that our best day in God's kingdom, our worst day in God's kingdom is better than our best day out in the world. And I think that really helps us when we're able to be with others outside of Christ and really scatter seed. Uh, Paul, Romans chapter 1 through 3, really, the whole first three chapters, he talks about the best of us is a mess without God. That's the theme of all those chapters, and, and that's the first epistle in the New Testament. The best of us is a mess without God. Let's be active in sharing our faith this summer. Amen, church? All right, let's go to Romans 15 now. So he prayed for others with gratitude. And the next thing we come across here in Romans, there's another theme here in his prayer life. In verse 30. It says, I urge you, brothers, by our Lord Jesus Christ and by the love of the Spirit, to join me in my struggle by praying to God for me. Pray that I may be rescued from the unbelievers in Judea and that my service in Jerusalem may be acceptable to the saints there, so that by God's will I may come to you with joy and together with you be refreshed. The God of peace will be with you all. Amen. The second thing here that we see is that Paul had prayer requests from others for himself. He asked for prayer a lot in his epistles from other people. And I think that his constant praying for others show couple things. One, Paul believed in prayer. He absolutely believed in it, that it would move God's heart. And if it was his will, he would move. And it also is not surprising, since he really believed in it and he prayed for other people so much, that he asked for prayer of himself very often. Uh, I appreciate a number of the brothers here, but especially I want to hold up Rick Meckhamson. Uh, he encourages me so much because Rick always tells me, bro, I'm praying for you. Regularly when we talk and have this, I'm praying for you, I'm praying for your family, I'm praying for your leadership, I'm praying for the church. I really appreciate that about Rick. You know, that means the world to me. That's a true friend. Because I really need his and your prayers. Amen? Paul was not shy about asking for prayers from others. Do you ask other people to pray for you? Are you soliciting prayer from others. I see Chris Ventura. Chris is another one. I appreciate it almost every time we talk, at the end of the conversation, he goes, bro, what can I pray for you? What's on your heart? What can I pray for you? I really appreciate that about Chris. Do you ask others to pray for you? 
And I do appreciate it when people call me in a crisis and they'll, they'll share, Danny, will you, will you pray for me in this situation? And I really appreciate Vinny Ruiz and just what he went through with his mom and the horrible accident. He called me and he had not seen his mom yet. He, all he knew that she was hit by a truck and her car was told he had not gone in the room. He goes, I don't know what I'm going to see. I'm really scared. Can we, will you pray for me? I said, bro, let's pray right now. And really prayed that God would move and that if it was his will, she would still be alive. She would recover and hopefully become a disciple. And then, in Jesus' name, amen, and he needed to go in. But that, that helped strengthen him to really face and see his mom. And she is on the road to recovery, as we shared with you a couple weeks ago. Let's go to Ephesians chapter 6. Paul solicited prayers from others on a regular basis. In verse 18. And pray in the Spirit on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. With this in mind, be alert and always keep on praying for all the saints. Pray also for me that whenever I open my mouth, words may be given me so that I will fearlessly make known the mystery of the gospel, for which I am ambassador in chains. Pray that I may declare it fearlessly as I should. So in the beginning here, he gives some general directions on prayer. What does he say? Pray in the Spirit. Pray on all occasions with all kinds of prayers and requests. And then it says, ask, and he asks them, please pray for me. What does he specifically ask for? What kind of prayer? That he would be bold. And that's what I told Mike Rock yesterday on the phone. I said, bro, I'm praying you're going to be bold, that you will not back down, and you'll preach the word even in some really dangerous places, and I'm also praying for your safety. It's really good to ask for prayers of boldness at times. Amen, church? Uh, I did want to let you know, I did hear from the Lopez's, and they are going to go to Dallas. Uh, they were here a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I haven't talked to Cesar personally. I heard it through Mike, uh, and that's why he was actually calling me from the Middle East yesterday. And, you know, I know it's disappointing, uh, but you know what? God is in control. God is in control. Uh, I'm not down about it. Uh, I'm not surprised. Look, there, it was either us or Dallas. It's 50-50. Uh, I do know that uh, he did text me. We haven't talked yet. He felt great about his time here, great about the group. But he just, it just was not the right fit for that particular couple. Amen? I know God has the right couple for us. Now, be praying for us. Be praying for myself, MJ and myself. Be praying for our staff as we throw out our nets because we've got to continue the interview process. I told you that a couple of weeks ago, if you're visiting here with us, we're looking to hire another couple. You can see with the number of people, it's a lot for just us. So we're trying to bring just the right couple in to help meet the needs here in the church. So I told you, you know, there may be others, and we're going to be going through that process again. I don't have in my back pocket, well, I got another name right here. That's not where I'm at. So, you know, maybe some, someone else is. We need to really be praying. I, I don't know, really, as far as who... Uh, the next couple could be that we could bring in. Now, you say, well, why didn't he want to come? Uh, one thing I heard is, I heard he heard that it got hot out here in the summer. So, I might, no. Just kidding. Uh, I really don't know. I haven't talked to him. Uh, I need your prayers. Specifically on this, please. MJ needs your prayers. And really be praying that uh, God's going to bring just the right couple to help us. See the number of people here. You guys are a handful. It's a lot just for us. I desperately need more help. Amen? But we're very grateful, and we know God's going to work. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, uh, verse 25, uh, he just simply says, Brothers, pray for us. Just knowing people are praying for you makes you feel great, doesn't it? Then it just fire? When someone tells me that, it just makes me feel good in Jesus. All right, moving on here. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. I've just entitled this part of the lesson, Golden Nuggets. Uh, he's got some things in the epistles that are just, wow, you just got to try and grab hold to them. And that, that's just a nugget of wisdom here that Paul had. Let's go in uh, verse 26. And he gives a little direction on how to pray and what to pray for. That would be good to find out, right? Some of us may think we've got that one figured out. And uh, look what Paul says on the topic. Golden Nuggets. In the same way, Romans 8, 26, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We don't know what we ought to pray for. But the Spirit himself intercedes for us with groans that words cannot express. And he who searches our hearts knows the mind of the Spirit. 
because the Spirit intercedes for the saints in accordance with God's will. This tells us that in our weakness, we don't know what we should pray for. And oftentimes I'll finish reading the Word, and then I'll, you know, begin my prayer. Life. I don't really know. Some just have a blank. You ever been there? So I don't know. You know, Spirit, help me. That's what Paul's saying. In our weakness, the Spirit will, will lead us and guide us and show us what we need to pray for. The Holy Spirit intercedes for us in a way that we just cannot express. Now, there are some things that I've heard through the years that are helpful. Those of you that are visiting, or if you really want to help develop your prayer life a little bit more, it kind of gives you a, an outline so you, your mind doesn't just go all over the place. Uh, I've heard the ACTS acronym used. Anyone ever hear that one? Adoration of God, confession, confessing sin, thanksgiving, and supplication. Uh, I've taught, and sometimes I'll follow the prayer model, P-R-A-Y. Uh, praising God, letting God how, uh, know how awesome he is, and just really lifting up God and his character and talking about that for a while. And then the R all used for repenting of sin, just confessing sin to God. He already knows it's there, right? It's good to ask for forgiveness, wh what's in there. Uh, and then the A is asking, you know, laying your requests, my requests upon God. And the Bible says wait an expectation for his reply. The Y is yielding and just giving my day over to the Lord and that my will can be his will. But here's the thing. We see this from this passage. You know, a prayer outline can be helpful. There is no formula. There is no method. Or this is how you need to pray. And there's no manual. It's God. And we can't put him in a box. We've got to let him out of his box. And we've got to let ourselves out. I want to encourage you. Let yourself out when you pray. And let yourself go. And let the Spirit intercede for you. Amen? Romans 12 in verse 12 uh, Paul said, be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. These are wise words, aren't they? Let's go through them briefly. Say you're hoping uh, for something. Say you're dating a brother or sister in the church, and you're really hoping that it can lead to marriage one day. And you get really excited about that, right? And you say, well, God, you know, if it's your will... Uh, please make this obvious if you want this to lead to marriage, and then I won't ever have any more problems in my entire life. Because we know married people never have any issues. Right, marrieds? We're all good. Never have another problem. It's not exactly true, but uh, some people, singles, like, that's the promised land right there. And, you know, amen. But uh, still got some issues we got to deal with. Marriage is about the best thing going here on earth, but we got some issues we still got to work through, even as married people, individually and collectively. But say you're excited about that, and, and you definitely want to be hopeful about that. You know, that's going to bring joy to your heart. That's a good thing, right? So we want to be joyful in hope in our lives and about situations. It says be patient in affliction. And, you know, when you're going through uh, a challenge or a struggle or a crisis, we've got to be patient. We've got to be patient through that. And some of us are really hurting this morning. We're really going through some severe challenges. And maybe it's our kids that are going through maybe severe spiritual challenges. And I think that we need to really be patient uh, for them. And I do want to pause here for a minute. I do want to offer up a prayer because it's been asked. And uh, we're going to say a, a prayer now for a sister who's been afflicted. And she's asking for prayer. And we're going to be praying for her right now. It's Sue Hernandez. And uh, Sue uh, had a routine uh, checkup uh, from her doctor. And she found out... I believe it was yesterday or Friday that she has breast cancer. And she's here with us today. She's a dear sister, and she's asking for prayer. And let's be praying. And one of the things I know MJ encouraged her is be really patient. She's afflicted right now. Be patient as she goes through the process. Let's pray together. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much uh, that Sue is our dear sister and your daughter. And God, I do pray that if it's your will, God, that she will uh, be healed uh, from the breast cancer. And God, help her to go through the process here. I know it's... I'm sure overwhelming uh, to be facing this, and it's scary. Uh, God, I know that uh, you have a very special place in heaven reserved for Sue. And as she suffers and as she's going through her affliction, God, I pray that she'll think about heaven more than ever, and it'll comfort her, bring her peace. And I do pray, God, if it's your will, she can be with her many more, that she'll be here with us many more years, and uh, help us know that we'll be lifting her name up in prayer to you every day. We love you. Pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you're like Sue right now and you're afflicted, we, you've got to be really patient with yourself or with situations. Amen? And lastly, he said, be faithful in prayer. Stay with it. 
Matthew 7, the asking there, the Greek means continue to do it. It's not one time ask, stay with it, and really be faithful in prayer through a lifetime. Amen? Let's go to Philippians chapter 4. These are just golden nuggets. I just feel like, wow, that's some good stuff. I wanted to pass it on. In uh, verse 6, and you ever get anxious about anything? You ever feel nervous about something in your life? What does Paul say? Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. There's a great saying by a wise man. He said, don't worry about anything, but pray about everything. Great words. And here Paul simply says, prayer, and you can write this down, is seen as a cure for anxiety. Wow. That's a nugget right there. Prayer is a cure for anxiety. And what else does he call for in the midst of your anxiety? Thanksgiving. Be grateful for the suffering, the anxiety, the pressure, the stress that you're feeling. Somehow Paul says we've got to be grateful for stress in our lives. Why? It builds our character and we rely on not ourselves but God. Right? Paul's point here is remember the past for your future. And remember how many times and one of the great things is the longer we're around, we see this more and more in our life. How many times God has brought you through the fire or the fires and the trials and the tough times and it reminds us, you know what? God's not likely to stop now. He's going to continue to do that. I've been reaching out to a man at the gym and we were just talking. He really uh, shared pretty openly with me um, a couple weeks ago and uh, he said he went on a trip to Florida. I go, well, how was that? He goes, well, you know, I have a horrible fear of flying. And I go, what do you mean? He goes, well, as soon as they shut that door, I get incredibly claustrophobic. And I struggle from claustrophobia. You know, I'm there, and my heart starts pounding, and I start sweating, and I, I have an anxiety attack. And he said, you know, that he's got to take some medication before he can get on the plane. And um, you know, he says he takes a half of Xanax. And I said, Wow. You know, I appreciate, you know, sharing that. And so, and I go, well, do you feel tired when you take this? No, you know, I actually feel normal. Then I can actually do the flight and I can't, I go, well, how about international? He goes, oh, no, no, I can't go international. I can stay in this country, but it's really a challenge for me. And then I said, no, well, how about, do you ever feel that way uh, when you get into a small hotel room? You know, and, and the doors close, you ever feel kind of claustrophobic? He goes, oh, yeah, I got to take it to sleep, too. I take a quarter every night and I'm able to sleep. And uh, he goes, I don't sleep much, but it does help me get some rest. Now, uh, so I say, I am not down on people that take medication. I give him credit. I hold him up for really getting help so that he can function in his life. Amen? And I give him credit for dealing with it. And I do give people credit for dealing with getting medication if you need it. Here's my point. Prayer can really help too. Prayer can really help lower, and Paul says, really reduce anxiety and get rid of it out of our life. We're going to close here in 1 Thessalonians in chapter 5, verse 16 through 18. He gives us one last nugget here. He says, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. And these are great words because they really build upon each other. If we're going to be joyful always, that's a high calling, isn't it? We need to be praying continually. And if we're going to be giving thanks in all circumstances, that's going to take a faith that God will ultimately bless us just as he always has. We need to pray like Paul. I hope this has inspired you. He prayed for others. And I know for myself looking at this, you know, I tend to pray more for myself than others. In the last couple of months, this has really helped my prayer life. Secondly, he asked for prayer for himself. Don't be shy. You're not being selfish if you're asking for prayer from people. That's a good thing. That's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of spiritual strength. And Paul did that regularly. And third and lastly, some golden nuggets. I want to encourage you. I just tossed out a couple. Go through the epistles. There's a lot more in there on the topic 
of prayer. I hope you have fun applying this to your prayer life and it helps you grow in your relationship with God. But mostly, I hope that you really just enjoy your walk with the Lord in your prayer life because I tell you from what I see in the epistles, Paul really did. Amen? Have a great afternoon. Thanks.